recently the federal government and uh, some of the major universities have uh, called to start to engage in geoengineering and uh, I don't know if anybody's reviewed any of the stuff that I sent out earlier about geoengineering. Um, the, uh, what I have here, these are all documents from, from like the DOD, Global Research, these are all government documents from, you know, stemming back to 1978 about proposed geoengineering, geoengineering studies, um, independent studies, and any of the stuff is available for the, for the committee members. But as of today, as of actually as of March 24th, um, the federal government and <coughs> Some of the major universities have, they're actually calling to start to engage in um, geoengineering of the environment to, in their words, to try to combat uh, climate change or, or, you know, other situations. So it'll be a man-made, it'll be a man's inter interaction with the uh, environment to, to adjust the environment. So this bill, um, H6011 is it's essentially a licensing bill that would uh, anybody that wants to engage in any type of uh, uh, environmental engineering would have to apply for the license and um, be totally transparent to the public and have a uh, apply for the license and um, go through all the proper channels of licensing. Uh, I have some witnesses here that um, are also know more about the law of uh, introducing something like this. And um, I just had one thing I wanted to read from uh, uh, Rosalind Peterson, who is uh, she? She's been involved with this for a couple of decades. She's out in. Uh, um, California. She she's with the Agricultural Defense Coalition, so they've been following this and uh, um, actually testified in front of the United Nations um, in one of their committee hearings discussing this actual uh, process, what they would be doing, and uh, and she says uh, it should be noted that the UK Parliament and the US House. Science Te Te Technology Committee held hearings in 2009 and 2010 on the global geoengineering governance. So that's with the actual, our federal government with the uh, um, UK Parliament. And uh, we're now faced with the reality of ongoing and upcoming geoengineering and the consequences of these actions. Uh, it's it's uh, important for for each state to take actions to protect their economy, the resources, and a myriad of uh, um, uh, plans for the future. You know this this addresses the uh, oceans, the agriculture, the forestry, our economy, human health, and uh, it, you know could negatively impact all of these programs and. Uh, and uh, I would just encourage everybody to, you know, have a look at this and uh, um, do a little bit of research and, and uh, certainly support this because it's here right now. The Council to Dane Wigington of GeoengineeringWatch.org, the California activist, and the Minnesota Natural Health Coalition, an educational nonprofit organization based in Minneapolis. The GeoengineeringWatch.org is a data and research repository on the critical issue of global climate engineering and climate intervention programs. <coughs> uh, that website has had over 26 million people visit, and roughly 20,000 people visit that website daily. Uh, Minnesota Natural Health Coalition is a nonprofit focusing on natural health and health freedom choices. Uh, they've taken an interest in geoengineering because of their belief that geoengineering poses uh, substantial harm to health. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to offer comments here in support of House Bill 6011, the Geoengineering Act of 2017. And I begin my comments by stating categorically 
that man's ability to, to deliberately manipulate and control the climate and change our environment is no longer science fiction. More than 25 years ago, in 1991, the U.S. Patent Trademark Office assigned to Hughes Aircraft Company a method of reducing atmospheric or global warming by seeding the atmosphere with a layer of metallic particles, such as aluminum oxide. That patent is currently owned and been assigned by Raytheon, a defense contractor. In 2009, a report by the United Kingdom's Royal Society, which uh, Representative Price referred to, said this about geoengineering, quote, appropriate governance mechanisms for regulating deployment of geoengineering methods should be established before they are needed in practice. And these mechanisms should be developed in the near future if geoengineering is to be considered as a potential option for mitigating climate change. The Royal Society further posited that there is clear need for governance of research involving large-scale field testing of some geoengineering techniques, especially solar radiation management and ecosystem intervention methods, which could have significant undesirable effects which might not easily be confined to a specific area. So I'm not gonna go through the entire chronology of the number of congressional hearings and United Nations hearings and reports on this subject. But to put it succinctly, just last month, as uh, Mr. Price uh, spoke, researchers at Harvard University announced a project to send aerosol injections into the Earth's atmosphere in what is probably going to be the world's largest geoengineering experiment to date. <coughs> now, given this brief history, there can be no dispute that the technology to deliberately manipulate the Earth's climate is real. It has been studied and written about for decades. And academics and political leaders right now are seriously considering experimentation with the possibility of deploying geoengineering these are technologies to intentionally manipulate the atmosphere and our environment as a plan of last resort, a plan B, if you will, to counteract the effects of climate change because our society has not been able to control emissions. And fossil fuels is still the energy of the day. Now is the time to establish policy in this vital area, beginning with public oversight of geoengineering. Now, House Bill 6011 is an important step to ensure that no one engages in climate engineering within the state of Rhode Island without the express approval of state officials and only after careful review by state agencies with the expertise to assess risks and the efficacy of these proposals with input from the public. <coughs> now, we support 6011 for the following reasons. First and foremost, Bill 6011 is necessary to protect human health and safeguard the environment. The 1991 patent, now owned by Raytheon, proposed seeding the atmosphere with metallic particles such as aluminum oxide. Now, according to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, exposure to high levels of aluminum can result in respiratory and neurological problems, possibly including Alzheimer's disease. Geoengineering methods also propose seeding the atmosphere with sulfate aerosols sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, exposure to sulfur dioxide affects the lungs, and at high levels may result in burning of the nose, throat, breathing difficulties, and severe airway obstructions. Exposure to hydrogen sulfide is the worst. Again, according to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, a few breaths of air containing high levels of hydrogen sulfide can cause death. Lower, longer-term exposure can cause eye irritation, headache, and fatigue. Now, light engineering poses serious risks for the environment as well. Geoengineering techniques may alter precipitation patterns, produce droughts, increase acid rainfall. Aerosol particles sprayed into the atmosphere could accelerate ozone depletion or reduce the total sunlight that reaches the Earth's surface, surface impact agricultural production, or reduce solar power production. Sulfate injection into the atmosphere can increase acid deposition in the ocean, possibly beyond biological thresholds. Geoengineering may pose unknown stresses on ecosystems and biodiversity. Now, some of these proposed techniques are not easily reversible. 
if the effects are not what were intended. As Newton said, what goes up must come down. Any particulates in the air will eventually fall to the ground on our homes, our businesses, the land, the water, our persons. Farmland covers about 10% of this state. Aquaculture is an important part of the state economy. We are not aware of anyone that has considered much less studied the impact of geoengineering on the ocean state's oyster harvest, for example. The economic impact of geoengineering experiments gone awry is completely unknown. <coughs> the consequences of, of deliberately manipulating the climate and the environment are not completely understood. More research and experimentation is underway, and absent legislation or some form of public oversight to monitor and control experimentation, private actors may be free to engage in reckless behavior in the name of science or financial gain. And I'll give you an example. In 2012, an American citizen conducted a geoengineering experiment in ocean fertilization off the west coast of Canada by dumping 100 <coughs> tons of iron sulfate, sulfate into the Pacific Ocean in an effort to trigger a plankton boom and promote salmon restoration. Now, state laws should prohibit this type of activity without authorization, but current laws do not necessarily prevent these activities. It's not clear that geoengineering is prohibited, even uh, regulated by existing federal and state environmental laws. House Bill 611 will guard against careless experimentation and deployment of any such activity and its concomitant risks. House Bill 6011 proposes a sensible method for tracking and assessing the danger and efficacy of any geoengineering activity in the state and for monitoring that activity and its impacts. In that regard, House Bill 6011 is entirely consistent with this state's environmental policies. And this state has vowed to protect air, water, land, and natural resources located within the state from pollution, impairment, and destruction. House Bill 611 upholds this state's commitment to those policies. Additionally, Bill 611, 611 is a modest bill. It only requires that anyone proposing to deploy geoengineering technology in the state apply for a license. And by disclosing the proposed project, its scope and methods, chemical substances being employed, and the qualifications of participants, that's not asking a lot in terms of regulation. It promotes transparency by providing the public with online access to that information and an opportunity to participate in the decision-making process through the hearing. It promotes efficacy by engaging the state's leading experts in environment, health, and agriculture, natural resources, and emergency management to weigh in on the potential impacts of the proposed activity. House Bill 6011 is not a blanket prohibition on geoengineering, though some might, some might argue it should be but it is a sensible approach to a new technology. The deliberate manipulation of the Earth's atmosphere and climate is real. It is imminent. It raises a host of scientific, political, ethical, and moral concerns, and in light of these concerns, Rhode Island is poised to meet that challenge today and lead on this issue for the sake of its citizens and its environment. Now is the time to establish policy in this vital area beginning with public oversight of geoengineering. Now, House Bill 6011 is an important step to ensure that no one engages in climate engineering within the state of Rhode Island without the express approval of state officials. <laughs>